This is the 2011 BMW X5M. While it may look like your average grocery getter, this happens to be one of the fastest vehicles the Truth About Cars has ever tested. So before we get underway, I've got to read you this section from the manual so you understand what kind of beast this is. It's about launch control. I didn't know about launch control in an automatic car. I thought, really, what's the difference? You have all-wheel drive, you have an automatic transition, why do you need launch control? It actually does help your 0-60 to 60 time, but only about uh, a tenth of a second, maybe two tenths of a second, absolute tops from our testing. But here's how you engage it in the M. Do not use launch control while towing a trailer. It's lovely that they need to tell you that. Only use launch control when the engine is warm, otherwise increased wear may occur. The first thing to do is when it's stationary with the engine running, you step on the brake pedal. Then you put this funky little shifter into MS shift mode, and then you use the paddle to shift it into M1 on the steering wheel. Then you activate MDM or deactivate DSC dynamic stability control, refer to page 21. Then you select the sport program of the M engine dynamics control. Then you floor the accelerator pedal completely. The engine speed is controlled for starting off and you get a little flag symbol in the center console here. Then the brake pedal is released and then the vehicle will accelerate and you continue flooring the accelerator pedal. Upshifting will occur automatically as long as the pedal remains completely floored. And it will only be available after a certain amount of time. So if that doesn't tell you how absolutely bonkers the X5M is, then follow us along while we drive it on the road. So as I drive slowly along towards the main gate here, I'll talk about a little bit how we uh, measure speeds. So we have two devices that I personally use. Uh, every reviewer at The Truth About Cars does their thing a little bit differently, but I personally use a GTEC Fanatic. Uh, this is the Pro SS. And this one is a GPS and accelerometer based 0 to 60 and quarter mile tester. It also does uh, 60 to 0 testing, which uh, we don't publish the numbers, but I can tell you for this X5M, it's a fairly respectable 155 feet from 60 to 0, which is really not bad for a car that weighs 5,600 pounds or so. And then I also use at the same time the older GTEC Pro, and this one is accelerometer, accelerometer only based. So I stick both of these on the windshield, and uh, if they don't agree with one another, then I do another test, and if they still don't agree with one another, then I average the two numbers together for our published numbers. And uh, on the whole, actually, they do seem to agree, and uh, the GTEC Pro Fanatic seems to be very, very close to uh, the radar-based systems that are used at drag strips uh, from my own personal testing. So that's how I test 0-60 to 60 times, if you've ever wondered. So while the manual talks about needing to push this button and put, pop that button and slap this paddle, put it into this mode for uh, the fastest 0-60 to 60 time, all you really need to know is that all of those settings can actually be put into the M mode setting in iDrive so that they can all be turned on for you when you press this little M button on the steering wheel and that's with the exception of putting the transmission into sport mode or regular regular drive mode. Um, it is quite a handy feature. It also changes the exhaust note so if you want to be a bit stealthier while you uh, drive home at night you know don't use M mode. Um, it seems to open up some veins in the exhaust as well to make that sound a little louder. But we're going to put it in sport mode and in M mode, of course. And I like all of my nannies on, so I'm not putting the car in M dynamic mode. It does make the car an awful lot more fun, but I think I'd like to live uh, on my way to work this morning. So let's go take it for a spin. The first thing you notice about the X5M is how absolutely insanely fast this thing is. 0 to 60, 4.06 seconds was the lowest recorded time that we had and that was on a nice cold morning. Uh, zero to 60 times vary a decent amount on this car because of the turbos and heat soak and that causes uh, you know some variation here. Our lowest time was 4.06 as I said. Our average repeatable time was 4.27 sec uh, seconds. So it's interesting that BMW quotes around the time that is perfectly repeatable in the X5M even though the true fastest 0 to 60 time of this uh, this vehicle is actually considerably lower and at 4.06 seconds that makes this car faster than the Cadillac CTS V Coupe that I tested, the uh, Jaguar XKR, the BMW M3, the BMW M5, the uh, Mercedes uh, E63 AMG, the C63 AMG, um, and all manner of other vehicles that I could mention. And uh, this is, again, just to remind you, a five-seater SUV. It's actually got a trunk back there. So that is quite impressive. The strange thing about this, though, is really not the acceleration. Uh, it actually is the handling. This thing handles very well. 
I, I would by no means say that this thing handles as well as an M5 or an M3, but what it is, is a lot more confident than either of those two cars. So I actually honestly have to say that I would rather have an X5M than an M5. I read one review where a reviewer is complaining about the X5M's environmental test score in which it receives a 2 out of possible 10 for its uh, environmental uh, stewardship, I guess. Um, I'm not quite clear what's lower, but I have to say that uh, of the cars that we've tested, fuel economy is not really that atrocious. Uh, I mean, it's not great, mind you, but even driving it as we have been, and I live in the mountains, so you know, going up and down the hills is a daily way of life. I've been averaging 15.2 miles per gallon according to the car and about 15 even according to my own calculations, which is actually not that bad. This is in the same league as uh, most of the uh, Range Rover products uh, with the supercharged engine. Um, it's definitely on par with a large number of sports cars with which it strangely enough competes and it is considerably better than the far lighter two-wheel drive Cadillac CTS-V Coupe which we tested and that one got nine miles per gallon so you know this is an economical choice so who is the X5M for? well I'm not quite clear we don't have a Monrooney available for this vehicle yet, as BMW didn't have one when they loaned it to us. But uh, by our estimates on BMW's website, this X5M should cost somewhere around ninety dollars to $95,000. And while that is a little bit expensive, and if you're complaining about price tags, then this vehicle is not for you. But hear me out. If you're willing to buy a base Porsche 911, and uh, then you need an SUV because you have to take your kids on the school run and then you have a trailer for weekends away and so that meant that you had to buy a pickup truck to tow your trailer because you know no one in the US can tow their trailer with something else other than a pickup truck then the X5M actually makes perfect sense because it's faster than your Porsche handles almost as well can tow your trailer and it's only one vehicle so uh, there you go that's what the X5M is for I swear, if this car was a person, it would need to be locked up in an insane asylum in a little padded cell and a little white straight jacket. That's how absolutely insane this car is. I would have said fucking, but you know, we can't probably can't say that on YouTube. Can we? Can we say fucking on YouTube? Is it absolutely fucking insane or is it just absolutely insane? I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, it makes me giggle.